Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to give you 10 tips that will make your audio editing in Cubase lightning fast. Let's get started. The first tip I want to talk about, and this is one of the most crucial things to know if you're going to do any audio editing in Cubase, is the range selection tool. This is the range selection tool. There are two ways to select the range selection tool. You can either select it individually or you can combine it with the selection tool by clicking this icon right here. And this way you can activate the range selection tool when you hover your mouse at the top portion of an audio event and the selection tool at the lower portion of an audio event. Now the range selection tool is extremely powerful. It allows you to do many, many different things, but let me show you a few of them. First of all, I can split sections of audio very easily. In this case, I'm going to select this section here and I'm going to hit Shift X. And as you can see, now I've cut this portion of the audio. I can also move things around very easily. So maybe I can select this portion of this audio and I can just hit Alt or Option on the Mac and drag it somewhere else. I can also duplicate range selections. For example, if I want to duplicate this selection a few times, I can just hit Control D or Command D on the Mac and I can just duplicate this range without cutting and then pasting and all these things. It's a very, very easy way to do things. And of course, it goes without saying that the range selection tool is extremely useful if you want to clean up your audio channels. For example, let's say I have a little bit of silence here, and this is probably going to be noise because this is an acoustic guitar that's recorded with a real microphone. So in this case, I might want to just delete this section. So I select it with my range selection tool, I hit delete and it's gone. And it's very easy to start doing this on all my channels so I can clean up my session very, very quickly. Now, while I'm showing you this, I'm going to talk about the next tip, which is momentarily deactivating snapping. So you can activate and deactivate snapping by clicking on this icon right here. And if we have snapping activated, that means that we can have our range selection tool and pretty much everything else when it comes to selection, follow our snap type and our grid type. So in this case, I have grid relative and I have adapt to zooms. And as you can see, I have snapping in quarter notes here, but if I zoom in a a little bit more, I have a little bit more resolution because Cubase adapts to zoom. But there are cases where you might want to completely deactivate snapping. And of course, you can hit J on your keyboard. That's the default shortcut for snapping on or off. But the other thing that you can do is you can momentarily disable snapping if you hold Control or Command on your keyboard. So I'm going to start making a selection with the rain selection tool, and you will see that it snaps right now. But if I hit Control, now I'm momentarily deactivating snapping so I can just delete the section that I feel that needs a little bit of cleanup straight away. Now, the third tip I want to give you again involves the range selection tool. And this is creating super fast fade ins and fade outs. So let's say I have this multi track here and I want to perform a fade out, but I want it to be very precise. Let's say I want my fade out to start at bar 35 and I want to extend it until the end of these audio files. So the first way is to just select all of the files and then just use my handles here and I can create my fade outs. But there's a faster and more precise way to do this. If you select your range tool and create this kind of selection, then all you need to do is press A on your keyboard and this way you can create fade outs very, very easily. And this can apply to pretty much every audio event that you have selected. So if I select all of these events and hit A, you will see that I have created a fade out for all these audio events. Same goes if I want to create a fade in. The next tip that I want to show you is something that many people struggle with when they're trying to create repetitions of let's say a chorus or a verse, or they want to move complex arrangements around in their project window. So let's say I have this chorus part here. And the chorus ends around here. And then we have a verse. 
So let's say I get a request from the artist and they ask me to duplicate the chorus, make a little bit of space here, have the chorus a second time, and then we move on to the verse. And sometimes this can be a terrifying request because you have to figure out all these channels, make space, move things around. Let me show you how you can do this the right way and the easy way. So. What I need to do is I want to make sure I set my locators to my chorus area. So in this case, I have a cycle marker, so it's very easy to do. I just double click or I can just do it like this. You know, it's very easy. So this is my chorus. Now, all I need to do is go to edit and I'm going to go to range and I'm going to select global copy. So what this does is it copies everything that's between the locators, which is exactly what we want. We don't want to lose any of the events that we have right there. Then I'm going to place my cursor where I want this global copy to be inserted. So not only is it going to paste this section, but it's going to make room so that it can paste this section and it's going to move all these things to the right. So let me show you how you do this now. I've set my cursor right here on bar 17. And now all I need to do is go to edit, range, paste time. And in my case, I have a shortcut for this, control shift V. When I do this, check what happens. Boom, straight away, I have the chorus duplicated and Cubase makes space for this chorus to be inserted here. So now if I play the end of the first chorus, And of course, after this, we're going to have the verse follow. So if you've ever been terrified of making changes like this in an arrangement, use global copy and paste time, and you're going to be able to do this in a split second. The next tip that I want to show you allows you to create very interesting stutter and chop effects. So let's say I have this vocal here, and let's say I want to chop it in let's say 16th notes or eighth notes. Let me show you how we can do this. The only thing you need to do is you need to grab your split tool right here. And then all we need to do is go here and select the value that we want the split tool to cut. So for example, if I want to cut every quarter note, I can hit Alt or Option on the Mac and I can click right here. Now we have split this vocal every quarter note. Now, if I want to create a more pronounced effect, let's say I want to cut into 16th notes, I can hit Alt and click right here on the first 16th note. And straight away, we have chopped this audio in 16th note events. Now, if you want to be creative, you can grab your mute tool and start muting events. And then you can create some really interesting chopping and stuttering effects. The way I like to do this is by using the mute unmute objects command. And in this case, I have a shortcut, I have V as my shortcut, and this way I can navigate through the objects and start muting very, very easily so I can get effects like this. The next tip that I want to share with you is assigning key commands to specific functions that you use very often. So in my case, I tend to use the silence function and the reverse function very often when I'm editing audio. So what I like to do is I like to clean up my audio sometimes like this. I take my range selection tool and instead of going to audio, processes, silence or reverse, I have assigned key commands to these functions. So silence is shift and space. And for me, reverse is control alt R. So very easily I can go select a portion of my audio event, shift space, and now I've turned this into silence. And if I want to reverse this portion of the audio, I can select command alt R and straight away it's reversed. The next tip that I want to share with you is the events to parts function in Cubase. And this can be such a time saver. Imagine this, you have this section here, you have all these chopped audio events, and you want to move this or copy this somewhere else in your project. Well, if you wanted to do this, you would have to select all of the events, make sure you don't miss anything, and then copy and paste it. And it's very easy to miss something or to misplace something. Instead, what you can do is you can grab these events and go to audio and select events to part. And in my case, I use this so often that I have a shortcut shift and D. So when you do this, Cubase 
will take all these events and it will place them in a container that's way, way easier to manage. This means I can take this and I can move all the events at once and they will keep their relative positions. And if I want to edit this, I can double click on this and I can see all the events right there. So if I want to do any minor changes, I can go inside and this will be updated outside. And if you ever want to go back, you can go to audio and select dissolve part. And this will take all these events out of the container and now we have them as separate events instead of a part. Really powerful feature this one and it saves you a lot of time and frustrations. The next tip that I want to talk about is all about zooming and Cubase has some really powerful functions when it comes to zooming in and out, focusing on different things in your arrangement. Let me show you a few of these things that you can do. Let's say I want to focus on this event right here and I'm going to be working on this acoustic guitar part. All I need to do is hit Alt and S and straight away Cubase adjust the zoom so that I can focus on this guitar part right here. So let's say I want to make some edits and I want to close this. Maybe I want to add a little bit of silence here. So Shift and Space and so on and so forth. Now, once I finish working, I can go back to the previous zoom state by undoing my zoom. And in my case, I have a shortcut for this and it's Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, Z. And I'm back straight away. So very easily, I can move back and forth between two completely different zoom states. Now, all these things are found here in the zoom menu and you can assign, of course, shortcuts to all of these things. And again, if I want to select multiple channels with a range tool, Alt S and I can zoom into this portion, Alt Z and I can go back to my previous zoom state. Now, if I want to show the entire length of my project, I can just hit Shift F and Cubase will zoom out horizontally to show me all the events in the project. This is the zoom full command in the zoom menu. Another very powerful tip that is going to speed up your editing workflow when you're editing audio is the cut head and tail commands. Now this you might want to assign it to a specific keystroke, but let me show you how it works. Let's say I want to cut this noise here from my bass. I can set my cursor wherever I want, let's say right here, and now I can select the event and now I can use the cut head command to cut everything before my cursor. So if I do this, in my case, I have a shortcut Alt and left bracket. And as you can see, this cuts everything behind the cursor. The same thing I can do for the tail. I can set this here, select the event, Alt and right bracket. And this is very fast and very precise. And if you want to assign this to a shortcut that you prefer, you can do this in the key commands window and the actions that you need to search for is cut head and cut tail. And last but not least, we have the offline processing presets. So let's say you have some specific processes that you do very, very often. Let's say you find yourself adding a specific processing like chorus, delay, and reverb to audio events. The offline processes allow you to create your own presets and reapply them as many times as you want on different projects. So in order to create our own presets, we have to go to audio, direct offline processing. And as you can see, I already have a few chains there already. But let's say I want to add a plugin. Let's say I want to add a chorus. So studio chorus. And I also want to add a reverb. And I'm going to add revelation. So this process consists of two different plugins. Now, if I want to save this, I can just drag this right here. Call it chorus reverb. Hit OK, and as you can see, now I have this processing chain right here. I can apply it to whatever event I want. The only thing I need to do is select the event and apply it. And this I can use again and again and again, and I can have multiple presets that consist of many different plugins in each chain. So for example, let's try and apply a preset that I've created to these roads. So let's apply this preset, and as you can see, it consists of reversing the waveform, adding reverb, and then adding a phaser. And I did this with one click. I didn't even have to lift a finger. This is all right there because I saved it as a preset. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.